Hello friends, I hope you have watched my previous video where I have talked in detail about engineering, what different branches are there, which engineering you should be selecting. Now in this next video that I am going to talk about, we are going to understand what the entire process is, means how engineering admissions take place. So students, I welcome you all. My name is Professor Pankaj Jilade. I'll be talking about engineering admission process in detail in this particular video. So let's begin. Now, as I said, the very first question that usually comes to a student's mind is how the process is going to begin. So we will take a step-by-step -step guide to understand the entire process. As we all know, we have to give either a CT exam, the Maharashtra State Board CT exam, or we have to give the JEE exam, the Joint Entrance Exam, which is also conducted for admissions of IITs and NITs. So that score is also valid to take admissions into engineering in Maharashtra State. Now, students, if you have taken only JEE. You have not given the state board CD. You have not given the Maharashtra state CD, which we call it as MHT CD. If you have not given that, then you will need to buy an application kit before you do your registration. But if you have given CD as well as JEE, or you have given only CD and not JEE, then you do not have to buy the application kit because you are already registered candidate. So there are two types of candidates. There are two types of registrations. One is called as already registered candidates and the other one is called as new registration. Now when I say already registered by that, we mean that the student has already given the CT exam. JEE may or may not be given. And new registration simply means that the student has not given the CT exam, he has only given the JEE exam. Now, both the scores are valid and admissions happen uh, on both the scores. But you should make a note over here that the students who have given CT exam will always have an advantage over the students who have given only JEE. Because in our state, the seats are distributed something like this. So 85% seats will be specifically reserved for state candidates. Those who are given the CD. So from CD, 85% seats will be filled up and the remaining 15% seats will be filled up based on the JEE score. So even if your CET score is less, but you have a very good JEE score, you still have a better chance of securing a seat of your choice. Now, usually people ask me what is a good score. Students, it does not matter. Whatever exam uh, you have given, whatever preparation you have done, you will be getting marks based on that particular studies, isn't it? So, it actually does not matter how much marks you have scored. Whatever you have scored is what, what uh, has happened, isn't it? You are not going to uh, change it. But still, I will tell you what a good score actually means. Anything which is above 90 percentile. Anything which is above 90 percentile is a very good score because students who secure 90 percentile in their CT exams end up with a very good college and a very good seat. Now, what do you mean by a very good seat? Seats of the choice of the student. Usually students go for what? Mechanical engineering or computer engineering. So, these seats fill up very fast. So, if you want to uh, be ahead in the race, you need to have at least 90 percentile in your CT exams. Same is with the JEE. Now, usually these numbers can vary depending on the cutoffs of the current year. Students, you need to know what is the cutoff of a particular college uh, in the previous year. To, to know the 
this cutoff, you have to visit on this particular site which you have already been visited while filling up your CET forms, isn't it? So it is called as www.dte.org.in. Usually, all the engineering procedure that is going to happen right from the schedule up to the registration, the allotments, every single thing will happen on this particular site www.dt.org.in It has uh, what you can say various uh, uh, categories uh, there is a, a, a CET of MBA, there is pharmacy CET, there is a technical CET, uh, there is diploma CET, lot of things are there. So lot of uh, uh, fields will be available on this particular website. You have to go to first year engineering. First year engineering, whatever the year is, if it is 2020, you have to go to first year engineering 2020. If it is 2021, you have to go to first year engineering 2021. So it is a graduate course. There are series of postgraduate courses also. So everything is bundled onto this particular website. You have to click on first year engineering. So once you have uh, clicked first year engineering, then you will be diverted to a website called as FE. 2019, FE 2020, FE 2021 and so on. So usually it is first year engineering 2019 or first year engineering 2020 and so on. So you will be directed to this particular website where you have to register yourself. So if you are given CD, you are an already registered candidate, you will be having your uh, user ID and the uh, login details, the password, everything exactly same as what you have used while filling up the CET form. So the same credentials, uh, credentials are used while registering yourself for engineering admissions also. So you don't have to go and buy an application kit. It has to be only purchased by students who have not given the CET exam. So that's a very important sign. So as I said, the distribution of seats is 85% for the CET and 15% for JW. Both the places there will be 50% reservation, 50% reservation for the castes. It includes everything. It will include the reservation for SCSTs. It will include the reservation for women, the female candidates. It will include the reservation for OBC, NT, NT1, 2, 3, whatever it is. So all the reservation will come into this, this 50% reservation. So for instance, if a college has say 120 seats, if there are 120 seats in a college, so it will get bifurcated into 60 open category, general seats we call, isn't it? 60 general category and 60 reserved category seats. So this is how the uh, structure is going to happen. So uh, uh, from there, as I said, 85% seats will be for the state and 15% seats will be for JW. Now, these 60 open seats that you have will again get divided into 33% female candidate reservation and the remaining 67% for the male candidates. Exact same thing will happen here also. So there is a 67% reservation for the male candidate, male and 33% reservation for the female candidate. So uh, there is no additional 33% reservation for the females. It will be segregated from the 60 uh, open seats, the 50% seats that you have for general category and the 50% seats that you have for the reserved category. Now, while uh, taking or while registering, one very important thing is who can register? That's a very important question. What is the eligibility? You need to know your eligibility. Now students, remember, if you want to fill up the form, if you want to do registration for engineering admission, your 12 standard marks of physics, maths, physics, maths compulsory subjects and either chemistry or biology or any vocational subject or any technical subject anything will do 
chemistry, biology, vocational subjects or technical subjects. Anything will do. So, physics, maths and any one of chemistry, biology, vocational or technical subject. So, here your marks should be at least 50% for the open categories and 45% for the reserved categories. So, physics, maths, compulsory subjects, chemistry, biology, vocational or technical subjects, any one of them. So that all the marks should become 150, 150 out of 300 marks and you should be having a non-zero score in your CT or JWE. So along with 150 out of 300 marks, you should be having a non-zero score in your competitive exams. So remember, this is the basic criteria to fill up the form. It does not guarantee admission. But if you take my uh, word, anybody who fills up the form will definitely end up with some of the other engineering seats. Because students, there are more than 1,50,000 seats available in the state of Maharashtra. Mumbai itself has around 20,000, 27,000 seats in Mumbai University. Colleges which are affiliated to Mumbai University, they themselves have 27,000 27, seats. So overall Maharashtra, if you take, there are more than 1,50,000 seats uh, scattered at various places into various branches. So anybody who fills up the form will definitely end up with an engineering seat. Uh, it might be of his choice or it might not be that depends on the marks that has been scored by the student but usually everybody will get admission because you, what has happened is the trend has been now changing now more and more people are uh, diverting to specialized fields rather than to come to engineering so that's why the numbers has decreased so there are always around 80 to 90,000 aspirants of engineering. So there are 1,50,000 seats available but the forms that actually come is around 80 to 90,000 uh, people only. So it is, there is a bright chance that you will definitely get an uh, engineering seat but which seat that depends on your marks. Okay, so uh, that's the eligibility criteria of filling up the form. Now once you have registered yourself on the website dt.org.in. What's the next step? Now remember, you will have to fill up all the details very carefully. Your name, whatever marks you have scored in your 10th standard and your 12th standard, all the PCM group marks, isn't it? Uh, further, if you are belonging to any reserve, reserve categories, you will have to fill up the form very carefully. I will make a point over here, while filling up the form, there is one option called as the tuition fee waiver scheme. So make this point very clear in the mind, what is a TFWS seat? Now whatever this 120 seats are available, every college, every single college, every single stream has 5% super numerary seats super numerary seats. Now, what do you mean by super numerary? Other than this 120 seats, there will be another 5% seats. That means if you uh, multiply 12 with 5, it becomes 6, isn't it? So there are 6 additional seats other than this 120 seats which are available for students from economically weaker section but they have a very good potential, they have a very good marks. So there is this TFWS, Tuition Fee Waiver Scheme, TFWSC, which is only 5% in every college, in every branch. So there is a cutthroat competition for these seats. Now what is the eligibility for these seats is, you belong to any caste. Caste does not matter here. What matters is the annual family income. It has to be less than 8 lakh rupees. It has to be less than 8 lakh rupees. It has been revised every year. At the beginning it was 4.5 lakh rupees. Then it has been raised to 6 lakh rupees. And from last year onwards, it has been 8 lakh rupees. So if your annual family 
family income is less than 8 lakh rupees then it does not matter which caste you belong into you will be eligible for this TFWS seat but as I said there are very 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 small quantity of these seats available it really needs you really need to have good score in your CET exams and as I said a very good score is nothing but more than 90 percentile in your CET exams so that's the power of TFWS seat now what happens here is your entire tuition fee when you go to any college the fees will usually range from 70,000 rupees to 1.5 lakh rupees there are colleges which are charging 1.5 lakh rupees per year and there are colleges which are charging minimal 70,000 rupees per year for an engineering seat now autonomous colleges which are government aided remember the difference I said government aided that means which are run by the state government those colleges have a very minimal fees VGTI, one of the most reputed colleges in Mumbai University, the oldest college of engineering, has a fees of only 48,000 until last year. It might have increased this year, but then it was only 48,000 rupees. But getting into VGTI is the prestigious thing a student can achieve. It is the most highly reputed, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> and a sought after college. Many of the students try to go into VGTI first. Now students, VGTI is one of the most reputed colleges. It is one of the most sought after colleges in Mumbai University. Every student wants to get into that college. The only reason it has a very good campus placement uh, and definitely the staff is also so good, so efficient that everyone wants to be into that college. But as I said, there are only 60 open category seats in a particular branch and 60 reserved seats in particular branch, isn't it? So if I say uh, VJDI has computer engineering, so they will have 120 seats of computer engineering which will get bifurcated into open and reserved category. If they have 120 seats of mechanical engineering, 120 seats of cell engineering and so on. So you have to be the top 60 people to be into this college, isn't it? The top 60 people in the entire state will get their admission into VJTI. So that is the main reason you have to have a very good score in your CET exams. Now, uh, let's come back here. Once your registration is done, students, you have to enter your name very properly. You have to uh, uh, enter your marks of 10th and 12th standard. Then if you belong to a particular category, you have to submit proper documents also. Documents are very important. You have to scan all those documents, make a PDF of it, make a JPG file of it and you have to upload it while filling up the form, while you are doing your registration. So you have to upload your photo, your signature. So you have to get the latest photo. Remember, get the latest photo. Get the signature very properly. Uh, according to the dimensions and the size which has been prescribed on the website scan your documents get all those documents necessary documents that you will be needing remember that you are applying for CT uh, seat that means you are already domiciled that means you don't need an additional domicile certificate domicile simply means that you belong to the state that means you are a student who has been born into this state he has taken his education into this state and that is why he is eligible for the seats which are available for the state candidate so that is what domicile certificate proves so either your birth certificate can become a your domicile certificate or your uh, school living certificate or the college living certificate in which it is mentioned where uh, is the place of birth so that can be counted as a domicile certificate if you do not have these things you will have to get a separate domicile certificate so make sure if you are not having a domicile certificate along with you go and get it as quickly as possible here i want to share you one story of one of my past students he is so brilliant that he secured his admission in mechanical engineering in vgti college he secured his seat into VJTI college and that to mechanical engineering but he was not admitted there because he did not have a 
domicile certificate since he was born into a different state he was born in a different state but he did his education in uh, Maharashtra state that does not count you should be born or you should, your parents should be staying in Maharashtra for at least 20 years but as I said it was very unfortunate for him that he did not have the domicile certificate uh, he did not have his uh, birth certificate because it was uh, 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 the place of birth was not of Maharashtra state, it was uh, from other state. So, because he did not have domicile certificate, he missed out on a life changing moment, isn't it? He missed out on a uh, seed which could be uh, have uh, a very different impact on his life. But eventually, he got admission into mechanical engineering in a different college, a reputed college itself, but not from CED. He got it from management quota. But he's a very good student, but he's a very brilliant student. But then uh, uh, the opportunity was not there for him because he did not have proper documents. So make sure that you have your documents along with you very properly. The next important document is your caste certificate and caste validity certificate and criminal certificate if you belong to reserved category. Now, scheduled caste and scheduled tribes, students who are belonging to SCST, they do not need a criminal certificate, but they will need a caste certificate and a caste validity certificate. Get it if you do not have it along with you. Without caste validity certificate, your caste certificate has no meaning. So make sure that you go to the nearest social welfare uh, uh, office, isn't it? it's called Samaj Kalyan. Uh, you should go there and you should get your caste validity certificate. It's a very important document. Uh, the next thing is the criminal certificate. It is for the OBC candidates and the uh, nomadic tribes NT1, NT2, NT3 and so on and the VJs, the Vimukta Jati we say for these students OBC, NT and VJ for these students the criminal air certificate, non-criminal air certificate is a must but it is not required for SC and ST now other thing important uh, uh, thing that you should be noting down here is if you are applying for the TFWS seat your annual income has to be less than 8 lakh rupees but you need to have a document saying that your annual income is less than 8 lakh rupees now your parents uh, income certificate might not be enough it is not enough isn't it it is not taken granted remember that you will need a document from a registered office from the collector office you have to go to your zonal collector office so for instance if you are staying in say Andheri region you have to go to the collector office which is present in Andheri if you are staying in say Borivli region if your area comes into Borivli region you will have to go to the collector office of Borivli region you have to go there you have to apply you have to take all documents with you your passbook your IT returns and everything you have to uh, fill up a form and then your uh, uh, income certificate will be generated from the collector's office that is a document that you will need to have if you want to apply for the TFWS seat only on the basis of income certificate you will not be eligible for this seat so documents is very important so have your 10th and 12th mark sheets the diplomas that you get from your school and college you get your living certificate you have your birth certificate you have your domicile certificate if it is required you have your caste certificate caste validity certificate and if required the non criminal layer certificate so you scan all these certificates and you do upload them on the same website fine so the registration is done once you have registered the next thing that you want to do is do the document verification. Now, where does document verification happen? Uh, the Directorate of Technical Education, we call it DT, they have appointed colleges. We call them as facilitation centers. In these facilitation centers, you have to go personally with a printout that will be 
taking after you have done your registration on the website. Do your registration on the website. Upload all scanned documents on the website. Then take a printout. You will get an acknowledgement slip that you have registered, you have submitted all the documents. So you get an acknowledgement slip. Take that slip and you have to go to the nearest facilitation centers. Now, these are also called as Setu centers. From last year, this concept has been introduced by DT. So, either you go to the facilitation center or you go to the Setu center. All the list will be provided. Now, DT has done such a fantastic job now that to avoid overcrowding at one particular place, what they have done is they have localized these Setu centers. So, you will find one in your area itself. They will give you an appointment at what time you have to reach there. You cannot just go haphazardly some, some time and then submit documents. No. They will give you an appointment. They will give you a time slot. You have to be there in that particular time slot only. You have to take one set of self-attested copies of all the documents. It needs self-attested. If you are able to do an attestation of the true copies, well and good. But even if it is not possible, make it self-attested copies. So one set of all the documents of self-attested copies. Okay. And the original documents should also be carried for the verification part. So you take the acknowledgement slip, you take one set of attested copies and you carry your original documents as well along with you. Go to the facilitation center or the Setu center in the time which has been allotted to you and you do the verification. So here your registration gets over. Is the idea very clear to you? Registration part is over. Now you have to wait for the next step. So now students, once your registration is done, what's the next step? The second step is you have to wait at your home. There will be something called as a merit list that will be generated after all registrations are closed. Now remember, admissions is a long process. It will be there for more than a month. Usually it is for more than a month. So it's a very long process. So once you are done with your registration, the uh, uh, DT allows a three days uh, grievances period. That means if you have you are not able to submit a document or if you want to do some correction, so DT allows a three days of grievances. So you can go there and do some editing work. Now remember, usually that does not happen uh, because at the time of verification, everything gets checked. But if there is some document that has been missing, you are not able to uh, procure it at the time of verification, you can later uh, later, you can submit it later on. So that is why these uh, three days are given. Now usually what happens is the registration process usually gets extended. Some time frame is definitely given, but then due to some technical errors or due to some due to some other uh, server errors or any other uh, uh, unexplained errors, usually this time gets extended. So be prepared for this one one and a half month long process. Now, what does the merit list contain? The merit list actually tells you your rank. Where do you stand in the entire state? That means your state rank will come. Where do you stand in your university? That means your university rank will come. For instance, I have filled my form in Mumbai University. My 11th and 12th standard education has been done in Mumbai University. So I am a Mumbai University candidate. So I'll be having a state rank and I'll be having a university rank, the Mumbai University rank. Of course, I can apply to colleges which are in Pune University. But the preference will always be given to the student who is there in Pune. Those students are called as home university students. So I am a student of Mumbai University. So I am a, my home university is Mumbai. And a student who has done his education from Pune University, for him the home university is Pune. Now we are both OHU candidates for 
uh, uh, the vice versa seats. That means I am an OHU candidate other than home university candidate for Pune University and the student who is in Pune University he is, he is an OHU candidate for Mumbai University. So there are some seats reserved for OHU candidates in all the universities. So this is what your merit list will contain. It will contain the state rank and then it will contain the university rank. That means in Mumbai University where do you stand? So if your rank is 353, it means there are 352 students in front of you. Isn't it? Your rank is 353 in the entire state. So there are 352 students before you. Then your rank is 353. Your university rank is let us say 62. It means that there are 61 people in front of you. Isn't it? In your university. Suppose if you belong to certain category and your category rank is 10. That means there are 9 people in front of you in your category. So there is a state rank, there is a university rank and then there is a category rank. So there are ranks for female candidates also because they have a special reservation. So this merit list basically tells you where do you stand and once you know where is your position then accordingly you can plan which college you should be filling. Now, if your rank is, let us say, I, uh, I'll assume it is say, somewhere around 25,000. So if your rank is somewhere around 25,000, you cannot think of getting an admission into VGTI college, isn't it? Everybody is trying to get into VGTI college, but your rank is very far. There are say six branches. Let us assume there are six branches. 120 seats in every branch. So there are 720 seats in VGTI, but your rank is 25,000. So it does not make a point to fill up VGTI as your option. Isn't it? So filling up options is very important. That is your next stage. Once your registration is done, once your merit rank has been decided, the next thing that you will be observing, the next thing that you will be facing is option filling form. Now remember, uh, engineering procedure is centralized admission process. It is called a CAP. Centralized admission process. That means DTE takes care of the entire admission process. You don't have to run pillar to post from every college to college and fill up all the forms. Of course, some people do, some students do that. Uh, every college has something called as management seats. But I am so not in favor of management seats. Students, you will definitely get admission to some of the other college. Then there is no need to keep on running here and there for uh, management uh, seats. That will be that should be your last resort. If you are not getting admission from your uh, uh, from your rank from the uh, from the state from the cap process, then you can think of the uh, management quota. Isn't it? So at, uh, at the beginning, just don't run, uh, run, uh, run around over here and there in uh, various colleges, uh, filling your forms or various colleges because every college has a minimum 2000 rupees admission form. If you go to 10 colleges, that will be 20,000 rupees. Isn't it? It's a, that's a big amount of money. So that is why I strongly recommend you believe in the system. You will definitely end up with a very good college, you know, with a very good seat. Now, uh, once uh, uh, the cap process is going to start, usually there are three cap rounds. Cap round 1, cap round 2, cap round 3. Third cap round is purely counselling based. So we will come to it a little later. Cap round 1 and cap round 2 are very similar to each other. Let's understand what is cap round 1 and cap round 2. So students, cap round 1 and cap round 2 as I said are very much similar what you have to do understand this while filling cap round 1 there will be 300 options available to you 300 options that's more than enough you let us say assume want to do mechanical engineering now find out what good colleges are there which are available for mechanical engineering now all this information is available on the website you have to just look into the website very properly 
So, which colleges are available for mechanical engineering? The list will be there. You don't have to worry about it. There will be a drop-down box. Now, see what what the drop-down box will contain. It will contain what branch you want to select. So, you put mechanical engineering. It will ask you to which university you want to select. Now, usually your preference should be your home university. If you are a candidate of Mumbai University, you should try to get yourself into Mumbai colleges itself. Now, it is not a harm to go into other university, but then you have to relocate. There are a lot of stuff that you want to take care of. So make sure that you take admission to your own university itself. So if you are a student of Mumbai, you should put Mumbai University. Now what happens? In Mumbai University, there are many colleges. Colleges are categorized something like this. There are autonomous colleges, autonomous colleges. So VJTI is an autonomous college. It simply means the college is affiliated to Mumbai University but the college is or it is having the freedom of their own syllabus. They can decide what syllabus that uh, they want to have, what topics they want to teach into their college. They are free to conduct their own examinations. They only by themselves put up the result of all the students. So all the curric curriculum activities, the academic activities are carried by the college on their own. University does not interfere. So that is called as an autonomous college. So the very first college is the VGTI College. The next one is Sardar Patel College of Engineering, SPCOE, which is in Andheri. So Sardar Patel College of Engineering. Then the other branch, SPIT, Sardar Patel College of Information Technology. So they are both of the uh, same, uh, what you can say, same management. Both the colleges belong to the same management, but SPCOE is affiliated or it is it is a government-aided college. Only SPCOE, not SPIT. SPIT is an unaided college. Look at this word I said, unaided. That means they do not get any aid from the state. So, VGTI and SPCOE, these are the only two colleges which are funded by the government. They are aided colleges. There is no government college in Mumbai University. There is a college called as College of Engineering, Pune. So, College of Engineering, Pune, College of Engineering, Nanded, College of Engineering, Aurangabad. These colleges are state-run colleges. State-run colleges, that means all expenses, every single thing is taken care by the Maharashtra state. VJTI is not a state-run college, isn't it? It's a private college, but all funding comes from the state. That is what is called as an aided college, and they are free to decide their syllabus, to take their exams, to uh, put up the results and everything. That is what they are called as an autonomous college. So VJTI, SPCOE, SPIT. And then there is KJ Somaya. KJ Somaya, which is in Vidya Bihar. Now there is another college of KJ Somaya, which is in Siam. So both are run by the same management, but the Siam College is not an autonomous college, whereas the Vidya Bihar College is an autonomous college. Now, next colleges which have been very recently added to the list of autonomous college is DJ Sanghvi it has become an autonomous college and Thakur Engineering College you got it TEC Thakur Engineering College so these are the six colleges which are autonomous colleges of which the first two are aided colleges that means they are being funded by the state and rest all the colleges are unaided colleges but they are all autonomous 
they are free to conduct their own exams to decide what syllabus they will be having to decide what subjects they want to put in first semester second semester and so on so these are autonomous colleges aided as well as unaided colleges so you have to uh, be very uh, selective while uh, taking these decisions at which college you want to go into so this is some of the list that I have discussed over here so students there are 300 options as I said that you want to fill up so you decided to go into mechanical engineering so you put a mechanical into the drop down box is it mechanical engineering then which university you want to select obviously we will go into the Mumbai University is it Mumbai University and what type of college you want to go whether it is an autonomous college an aid college an unaided college or minority college now this is a new word that you might be hearing a minority college now remember DJ Sanvi is a minority college uh, for Gujarati speaking community Thakur Engineering College is a minority college it is for Hindi speaking community so KJ Somaya is it that is also a minority college again for Gujarati speaking and Sindhi community uh, 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 SPIT is also again a minority college so minority colleges are basically uh, community based colleges whatever seats are available into that colleges I will give you an example there is a college called as uh, let's take an example of St. Francis, it is, it is one of my favorite colleges. St. Francis, SFIT we call it. St. Francis College. St. Francis College is a minority college. It means it is a Christian minority college. Christian minority college. That means whatever seats are available into this college, 50% seats will be for the particular community it will be for the particular community and remaining 50 percent seats it will be for the state candidates so 50 percent seats are allotted straight away for students who are christians and the remaining 50 percent seats are there for students who are from the state so that is what the minority college means so uh, while, while selecting, you should definitely try to get into the minority college also. So, in the drop down, what will you have? You will have mechanical engineering, then you will have what university, so Mumbai University, and what type of college that you want to get in? You want to get in, in any college uh, that will be offering the uh, seat of mechanical engineering. So, either it is a minority college or it is an aided college, unaided college, that does not make any difference. Now, there might be still some confusion, right? Definitely there might be some uh, confusion about what is an autonomous, what is non-autonomous, what is a B.Tech degree. Again, I'll come to this part. Listen carefully. Uh, colleges which are autonomous, these all colleges now offer something called as a B.Tech. They offer B.Tech. So, Bachelors of Technology. Whereas colleges which are not autonomous but they are affiliated to Mumbai University. Even these colleges are affiliated to university but they can carry on on their own that is what they are called as autonomous colleges and the degree that has been awarded although it belongs to Mumbai University but the degree will be called as BTEC. Whereas the degree which is been offered by colleges which are affiliated to Mumbai University but not autonomous will be offering bachelors of engineering getting or not so there is BTEC there is B now students tell me which is better both of them are same there is absolutely no difference between what the BTEC degree is and what the B degree is both have the exact same knowledge because they both have exact same subjects the only difference is exams are conducted by the college and here in your uh, uh, this colleges where which are affiliated only to the uh, Mumbai University, they are not autonomous. Here, the exams are conducted by the Mumbai University. So here, the exams are conducted by university. That is the only difference. There is no difference in knowledge, the syllabus, nothing else. The only difference is autonomous college will offer B.Tech degree, non-autonomous college will offer a 
university degree, which is a BE degree. That's the only difference. So, uh, mechanical engineering, Mumbai is a university, and then which colleges you want to enter? All types of colleges you want to uh, seek admission for. So, that is how you should start selecting your options. Now, while filling up the options, be prepared not just to get into mechanical, but if you are not able to get a seat in mechanical, be prepared to select a different stream also which is related to mechanical. For instance, you can go into production, you can go into uh, chemical engineering also, it's also one of the lucrative fields. So keep your options ready, set your options very properly people. Now I have students, I know, I know such kind of students who were very brilliant. Previously, there was not percentile concept. There was straight away marks obtained. So I knew a student who secured 154 marks out of 200 in his CD exam. 154 marks people, it's a huge amount of marks. He might have ended up doing engineering in a very good college. But still, he took admission into a college which is in Karjar. He stays in Bhainder, he goes to college to Karjar for 4 years, look at the misery and it all happened because he took wrong decision, his options were not correct. So filling the options is a very critical part, what is your first option, what is your second option, third option, fourth option and so on. If you want to seek an expert advice, make sure that you take it. Do not hesitate, do not be shy to ask uh, advice if, if you are not very clear with the option because this is a life changing moment. I'll tell you a story, I'll tell you a small story about myself. Now, when I did my engineering, at that time there was no CET. Only admission was based on the marks that you score in your 12th standard. So, I had a pretty good score and I was offered two seats. One, I have done my chemical engineering as you have already, uh, I have already discussed this with you. So, one seat was available into DJ Sangvi which was not graded college. At that time, it did not have any grade. And the other seat was offered in MGM CET uh, which I am very much proud of. There, that college was having A grade. So, at time of my education, DJ Sangvi did not, did not have any grade and MGM CD had A grade and I was so reluctant that I, I wanted to take chemical engineering so I did not go for paint technology, dye technology which were available in UDCT so what I did, this was a terrible mistake of my life I still regret it, I don't want this to happen with you do not decide on the grade of the college, that does not matter I am staying in Andheri, MGM city is in Panwel, so I have to travel every single day from Andheri to Panwel. The, uh, com the commute is at this time it is quite easy but 10 years back it was very challenging. So students, I always recommend anyone who comes to me seeking where should they be taking admission. I recommend them take admissions in a college which is very near to your house within the radius of 10 kilometers because engineering life is very challenging the college starts at 9 in the morning it uh, runs up to 5 pm in the evening so 9 to 5 you are there in the college and if you have to travel for 2 hours 3 hours to go to the college you have to travel 2 hours 3 hours come back to the uh, home isn't it so that becomes a span of 13 to 14 hours you are out of your homes you will be terrible and miserable for your four years of engineering. So make sure that a college which, which is within your proximity, that is a good college for you. Grades do not matter. Grades do not matter. At the end of the day, who is going to take your exam? Mumbai University. Mumbai University is going to take your exam if uh, you are not in an autonomous college. Who is going to award you the degree? Mumbai University is going to award your degree. So keep your grades high. That's all is needed. College does not matter. So make sure that you try to get into a college which is very close to your house within your proximity. 10 kilometer radius you can say. 
Now, so filling out the form is very important. Students, if you want any help, any kind of uh, guidance or advice from me, come to the comment section, leave your contact, your phone number or your email ID or whatever it is. I will get back to you, you leave your question, I will definitely make every effort to help you to select these options. So you have to fill up the options very carefully, you have to be very sane while doing this particular stuff. So that's an important and critical step of engineering. Your next four years are going to get decided by this one particular decision, this one uh, point where you will be uh, putting your options that is going to decide how the flow is going to get channeled so it becomes very important people make sure you make no mistake here if there is anything any doubt over here ask someone go and seek advice of a known person now once you fill up the option form much of the thing is done once you have selected the preferences which is the first call, second call, and third call, and so on. Then the next step is allotment. So once these option forms are done, once this uh, 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 selection of colleges is done, you don't have to go anywhere. You have to sit at the comfort of your home. Everything will happen online. So just relax. Do not do not be in any, in any kind of haste. You have to just relax, sit at the home and follow the procedure. So the first step was registration, the second step was merit list, third step is filling up the option form. So right now we are into cap round 1, remember that. We are into cap round 1. So option form is filled up. Now let's understand how allotment is going to happen. So students in allotment what happens? Once you have done with your options, the university, the site will start checking which college, which seat can be allotted to you. I'll give an example. Suppose you have filled out the first option as VJDI mechanic. VJDI mechanic. But uh, all the seats are filled up and VJDI mechanical is no longer available. Now remember this, this is a very important student. This is a very important point you need to know. Whatever first option you have filled, the first option that you fill, that's very important. The first option is a compulsory option. If you get admission to the first option, because that is your best choice, the first option is your best choice if you select the first option as VGP Mechanical and you get the seat, you cannot deny this seat. Remember, this is very important. You cannot deny the option which has been allotted to you as your first preference. Your first preference is your best preference. So if it is allotted to you, there is no going back. You have to compulsorily accept that seed. You have to something called as freeze that seed. If you do not, you will be out of the admission process. Remember that. So, Make sure that your first option, your first choice is the best choice. Remember that. Now, suppose your ninth option is, let us say, Thakur College Mechanical. Your ninth option is Thakur College Mechanical. And you are allotted this seat. So once a seat is allotted, once a seat is allotted, there are three options available now. Three options are available. The first option is called as freeze. The first option is called as freeze. It simply means, are you happy with the seat which is given to you, which has been awarded to you, allotted to you. If you are happy with the seat and you don't want to participate for the second round, you are not willing to participate in the second round, you want to save yourself from all the hazards. You can accept this seat, freeze it, go to the college and secure your admission. You will be out of the admission process. There is no cap round 2 for you if you select the freeze options. That's the first option available. Lot of students don't do this. What they do is the second option. 
The second option is float. The second option is float. Now what do you mean by float? Now, there are many students who are actually aspiring for medical seat but they are not very sure whether they will get a medical seat or not. So, to safeguard their ear, they take admission to, they fill up the form of engineering also. When they get admission into medical, they leave this seat of engineering. So the seat becomes vacant, isn't it? There you have a chance of betterment. That means, in the second round, when the gap round 2 is going to happen, at that time, if you have allotted, you have been allotted the ninth seat, you are eligible if you are going to get this seat. If you are eligible, then you might get a seat which is above this ninth option. Whatever option you have, you can definitely edit these options. You can definitely edit your options in second round. Cap round 2 is called as a betterment round. Once a seat has been allotted to you, that will always be at the bottom. And above it, you can change any number of seats. You can put again 100 uh, uh, options over there. And whatever seat is allotted to you will become your 101st, 101 option. So you can do any number of changes. Isn't it? So that is what is betterment. If you think that the college that has been awarded to you is not your best choice and you can still have a better college, then you should be going ahead with cap round 2 and for that you need to do float. Okay, that is called as float. So that is the second option. And the third option my friends it is slide. Slide. Now there are many students who have this point, uh, who have this thinking that College is very important. My point is, college is not important, branch is important. What branch you want to go into? But some people have this uh, fascination that they want to be in a very reputed college, a very good college. Branch does not matter for them. So for those students, for instance, my first five options were all DJT. First five options are all DJD and I've got fifth option. I've got fifth option. I've been allowed in the seat which was my fifth option. So I can do slide which uh, what you can say which confirms that you will have that seat in VGT college but if any other seat is available in the same college you will be allotted that particular seat which you have filled up above this particular fifth option above the fifth option again you can do n number of changes is right so you can do changes you can do editing in the uh, preferences that you want for instance you wanted uh, uh, let us say computer engineering then it engineering then electronics and telecommunication then electronics engineering and then say textile engineering and you are allotted textile engineering in vgti but uh, uh, from textile now you don't want to go to electronics and electronics and telecommunication. You are happy with textile. Uh, but you want computers or IT. So you can only keep two options. Computers and IT. And then the third option will be textile engineering. Or you can do this also. You want mechanical. You want civil. Then you want computers. Then you want IT. Then you want electronics. Then you want electronics and telecommunication. And the last option. The option which has been allotted to you which is let us say textile engineering so this is how you can do editing so remember that cap round 2 is betterment of the round betterment round means once a seat has been, seat has been allotted to you there is a chance that you might get you might be uplifted to some other branch into a very good college okay so that is called as betterment and for that you need to either float or you need to slide you cannot freeze if you freeze that means you are out of the admission process you have accepted what has been given to you so that is what freeze means and option one if you get if you get option one into your uh, admission process it is auto freeze you cannot do anything you just have to go there and uh, take the admission nothing else can happen so freeze float and slide so this is what will happen in cap round one now once you have done any one of these three things freeze float or slide any one of these three things next is doing the confirmation of it now what will happen is once a seat is allotted to you 
and you decide to do one of these three things. Now, you can leave the seat also. You cannot take any action. If you do not take any action, the seat is gone. If you do not take any action, you might not want that seat. You might, might have just filled up uh, just for the sake of filling the form, isn't it? And uh, the seat is allotted to you, but you are not desiring that seat. For instance, I will tell you an example. One of my students, she is a girl candidate. She was allotted Electronics and Telecommunication College in MS Sabu Siddhi. Now she stays in Borimli and MS Sabu Siddhi is in Baikala. And since she is a girl student, she does not want to travel to law. So she decided not to take any action. She did not freeze, she did not float, she did not slide. So what happened? The seat will go. Nothing else will happen. The seat will go. She again filled up a new option form for the second round and she ended up with SFIT seat that to in IT. She got a very good seat, isn't it? So she left the seat of MS Abu Siddhi, but still she, she ended up with a very good college and with a very good seat, isn't it? So that is the power of changing the alteration of option form. So you have to be very wise while doing such selection. Now, once the allotment is done to you, you again get a printout of the allotment letter. Get the printout of the allotment letter and this time you have to go something called as an application received center. It is called as an ARC, application received center, which is for Mumbai, which is usually Sardar Patel College of Engineering. Maximum students will go to this ARC center. So, uh, Sadar Patel College, you have to go, you have to make a DD. Now, it might be of rupees 5000 uh, uh, as it was previously, or the value might change, the amount might change. Remember this everything will be provided on the allotment letter. You have to make a DD. On whose name the DD has to be made will be clearly printed on the allotment letter. How much amount the DD has to be made will be clearly printed on the allotment letter. So you don't have to worry about anything. So once you are allotted this seat, you have to go to the ARC, you have to give the allotment letter, they will accept your DD, they will put up a stamp on your allotment letter, it, it's, it's like an acknowledgement. Then once this thing has happened, you have to go to your college, the allotted college, and you have to pay the remaining fees. For instance, if the fees of the college is 1 lakh rupees, you have already paid 5000 rupees at ARC. 1000 will be deducted as the charges for all this process and 4000 rupees will be given to the college. So, you now have to pay only 96,000 rupees at your college. And if you belong to the reserve category, obviously there is no fees you want to pay. If you belong to the OBC category, you will have to pay 50% of fees and so on. And if you are a TFWS uh, candidate, all of your fees will be waived off. So, this is the power of uh, this entire admission process. So, uh, you have to go to the college, you have to report to the college, you have to submit your original documents over there, the allotment letter over there and your admission is done, congratulations to you. Now, if you have decided either of the two, float or slide, you still have to go to the ARC. It's not that only free students should go to ARC. Even the students who have selected float and slide will need to go to the ARC if they want to take an action. If they want that seat with them, you will have to go there. If you do not take any action, if you do not go to the ARC, it is taken as you don't want this seat, we will confiscate this seat. So they will take the seat back and then again you do uh, fill the option form entirely fresh. So you have, you need to take an action. If you want that seat, you need to take an action. Now, what's the advantage of float and slide? It's a betterment option, means it's a betterment round. The cap round two is a betterment round. The seat will not go, the seat, the seat is there with you. If there is a better option available, then we will give it to you. If not, whatever you have got will stay with you. That is what float and slide means. Whatever you have got, it is definitely going to be 
there with you, it is going to stay with you. But for that, you have to go to the ARC. You have to confirm that I want this seat, but I still want to participate in Capron too. I might get a better college. I might get a better seat. So then you have to tell the ARC people, isn't it? So for that purpose, you want to go to the ARC, do the confirmation and wait for the cap round 2. So cap round 1 ends here and the cap round 2 again starts in the exact same manner with the allotted seat to you at the bottom and then you can keep on any number of changes above it. So that's cap round 2. Now it might happen that a student might not get any seat in cap round 1 or cap round 2. There are some students, some unfortunate students who do not end up with any of the seats. So do not dishearten. There is still a lot of uh, options available. Usually in counselling now what happens is, whatever seats are left out. Now what happens is, in uh, reservation category let us say, let's say SC or ST category. 33% uh, reservation there. So there are 10 seats in a college of SCST. There are 10 seats in a college of SCST out of which three seats are allotted to girl candidates but only two seats got filled up one seat is still empty one seat of a girl candidate belonging to SC category is still left likewise there are so many seats which remain empty all these seats are filled up in the counselling round all seats become open category seats there is no category in cap round 3 counselling round has no categories it is purely merit based that means suppose your rank is 1034 so they will call you in a particular slot 1000 to 2000 students 1000 to 2000 whoever has a rank should come on this date at this particular time so to go there there is a big screen which is going which is which is run over there where the colleges are continuously getting updated which, which seats has been taken which college has what seats left continuously the updation is going on so you have to find out which seat you want go there straight away pay the uh, 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 desired amount whatever they are asking for take a DD uh, whatever amount uh, they have asked whatever name they have asked and go and secure admission that's all so that's what counseling round is uh, it is one of my favorite rounds because I have uh, uh, seen students who have uh, very less score, very less score, but they still end up with a good college, a very good stream. I knew, I once knew one student, she was not even eligible for filling the form. She uh, 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 gave her papers for rechecking, for re-evaluation and her marks increased by 3, 3 or 4 marks increased and from 49% she came to 50% so now she was eligible to fill the form so once that 50% mark was there she was eligible to fill the form but she was not uh, uh, she was not allotted any seats in cap round 1 and cap round 2 because by that time she was not eligible so when this counselling round came 50% marks students 50% marks and she ended up with computer engineering in one of the most reputed colleges in Mumbai, uh, the St. Xavier's, which is in Mahi. So this is what she was so fortunate, isn't it? So uh, uh, the, cap, the counseling round came to her help, isn't it? So this is what can happen with you also. You just need to have patience. That's all. Have patience, you will definitely end up with a very good seat. So, there is cap round 1, there is cap round 2, there is counselling round, there is registration, there is online option form. So, it's a very simple process. There is no problem at all. Is there no uh, uh, ups and downs and nothing is there. There might be just restlessness that I have observed in students. If a particular seat gets allotted, the student becomes very restless. They want to get into that college. They don't want to take a risk. They are always thinking, ye seat nahi mila to kya? So don't don't get don't have these thoughts into your mind. If you believe, you will definitely get it. So you do not have to worry about any particular thing. So make sure that you have all your documents, students. Get your documents ready very properly. Uh, seek some expert advice if you need to have on the online option form and as I said which college is best for you the college which is in your proximity 10 km radius right? so uh, it does not matter which college you go into you just keep your grades high 
That's all is needed. Nothing else. Every college has a very good placement. Every college is now, uh, they, they are all competing against each other to get more and more companies into their colleges, isn't it? So you just need to be prepared when the company comes, isn't it? You just need to be very good with your knowledge part. College is not going to matter. So all colleges nowadays have campus interview, uh, all colleges have a very good staff, very good infrastructure. So it does not actually matter whether it's an A grade college or B grade college or uh, where that college is, isn't it? So you just uh, uh, get on with it, take an admission uh, to a college and try to take admission into a stream of your choice. Is that right? So you have to be very particular about that. Find out your interest and then follow it. That is all you should be doing. So students, this is all about the admission process. If you have any questions, even after watching this entire video, please get back to me. I will definitely make sure to answer all your questions. I thank you all so much for watching this video. You all have a great day ahead. All the very best for your admissions. Thank you so much.